our quarter hour to a half hour show, which will make it easier for you to watch and make you more receptive. On our show today, we'll have Reese and Company, who will be singing for us. It'll be a slight promotion for Castle Capers, which is being sponsored by the NFL Club. It'll be on January 13th and 14th, and it'll be at the Fresno High Auditorium. We'll have the Short Fly Girls performing for us, and we'll have Mr. Neal and Mr. Matthews talking about what it, buildings, building will be going on among the Bullard High campus with the $6.5 million we received. And we'll also have a slight insight on the alternative school. We hope you enjoy our show, and thank you very much. Drug is a friendly neighborhood store that gives you close, personal attention. But we're big enough to let you choose from a wide variety. We have all kinds and sizes, not just a few popular ones. Our village drug is a fun place. It kicks just checking out the aisles. And nobody will bother you unless you want help for school supplies, art supplies. How about a hat? Zori's? If you're looking for a gift and you don't know what to buy, drop in and look around. You have gifts for a little money or a lot. And our free gift wrap is actually free. In fact, we have all kinds of services, even a post office.
Remember, Fuller Village Drug is big enough for variety and small enough for comfort. Dick Neal here, principal of Bullard High School. Larry Matthews, vice principal. Larry, I'd like to chat with you a few minutes about some of our building, our proposed building plans so in our, in our uh, process and the early stages right now. We met with the architect this morning and we talked about, the first building we talked about was the, the drama, the instrumental music, and vocal music. Are you aware of uh, the type of a building that we're trying to, we plan or proposing right now for the uh, northeast corner. Well, I know that uh, that you've talked with and I've talked with the teachers that are involved, and we've been able to visit some buildings that house the same kind of things. I think it might be good to share with them kind of what the teachers and some students have been talked to us about as far as uh, what we would have in that building, like. Uh, we're tr we're attempting to get some kind of little theater kind of um, mm -hmm. facility as well, aren't we? Where they can put on some kind of production things. Gary Gary Deer and I and Arlene Apkarian and uh, Miss Collette, Elaine Collette, looked at the City College, Redmond City College Center. What we'd like is a little theater, about 400 seats, and off to one side of that would be the instrument, the band room big room with ample storage space and a TV coverage so that we could we could televise and tape programs from the music instrumental room and also from the theater. There would be a classroom and staging areas to the back of the theater that would take care of the drama setup. Then on the other side we'd also take care of uh, vocal music so that we would house all three of them at the same time and have a place this north end of town, where we could accommodate 400, 450 uh, people in a theater type setting. And as far as where it would be on campus, we're talking right now about the northeast corner. We're talking about the northeast corner. You would have Palm and uh, Paul and Browning. Browning. You could have egress in from Browning, and also some parking in the circular part, circular from off of Paul. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one building. Now remember, this this uh, the sum for this bonding issue is five point. Five million or six point five million, but inflation is already inflation plans have already eroded it down to five point five. Oh. The incidental costs and fees and things like that. So we also have to we also have to air condition the entire plant. Next we move next we move from the little theater part to a new gym. Now that we were talking in the uh, physical education people, we're talking with the architects again this morning, and we're talking about a gym facility west of the present one. I think you, I think you got in the tail end right. of that this morning. So we would build a large gym, a large gym area. We would uh, we would build a new gymnastics room, ample locker space, training room, classroom situation. Has there been any discussion on what they're going to do with the old gym? Is it going to be tied in with it in any way? Or yeah, is it the, yeah, the old gym will be used as a, as a physical education classroom, classroom setup. Mm -hmm. we, we have ample use for that. So the next, it's not going to be torn down or anything. Quickly, just quickly, we go into a new science wing. We go into some industrial arts, remodeling the library, and four new class wings at the south end of the plant. I don't know how much time we have now, but in a nutshell, that's, that's our building program. Ferdinandis has the widest selection of formal wear in the valley. Careful now, you'll wrinkle your tags. No way, Ferdinandis are wrinkle resistant. What a lie. Remember now, Bird's the word. Every day is fashion day at Hair Country at Shaw and West. Hair Country brings you style, and style gives you confidence and a lift. 
you feel like you have it all together. Get ahead of the fashions and come to Hair Country at Shaw and West. Here we are in the Bullard Alternative School, a school within a school, and it's located on the north end of Bullard High. I'm Jill Stanley, and here with me today is Mrs. Axe, the principal of the Alternative School. Mrs. Axe, why is an alternative school needed? Because some of the kids are turned off to the regular program. They don't like the large classes. Many of them are working. Well, who's in the school? What kind of kids are in the school? <laughs> students from Bullard. Mm -hmm. Only Bullard students. Um, more boys than girls. And wonderful kids. Uh -huh. Well, how have the students reacted to the program? Do they like it? I they think they like it? it really well. I think they, um, they show it by their attendance. Mm -hmm. well, what are the advantages and disadvantages to having an alternative school at Bullard? Smaller classes, individual instruction. Each teacher has an aid. The ratio is not more than 15 to 1. Are the teachers responding well? Do they like working with the kids? Or? They love it. Do they? <laughs> Do you think the standard of education is the same here as at Mainline Bullard? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And the classes, are they the same as at Mainline Bullard, the same offered? And <laughs> the same required classes are offered, but they're not the same since it is an alternative school. Mm -hmm. When a student graduates from the alternative school, what does his diploma say? Does it say he's from Bullard or an alternative school? Or? None of the diplomas, I believe, will say a school. They all say Fresno Unified School District. The only place there would be a difference would be in my signature as principal as opposed to Mr. Neal, mm -hmm. and the cover might say board continuation. How does your attendance procedure work? <coughs> we take attendance hourly. Well, um, um, I hear that you have 96% attendance. That's very good compared to the mainline bullet I know. It is excellent. How do you get them to come? We make phone calls. Uh, we Kids like the classes, they like the teachers, so therefore they come to school. When they are absent, we call the parents. Overall, what would you say um, is the school a success overall? Yes, so far. Well, this is an art class. What would you say about some of the other classes? Well, why don't we go visit the other classes? Okay. <laughs> This is a biology class in the alternative school. Mrs. Myers is the teacher of both math and biology. Uh, what is the, what's different about this biology class or your math class, for instance? All right, I'll take the biology class first, since this is a biology class we're looking at now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have laboratory equipment, so we sort of have to do what we can as far as discussions and textbook work. Mm -hmm. So it's a case of uh, setting up something that we'd like to discuss. Many times it's very topical things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, things we find in the newspaper we discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's textbook material. And um, we let students give special reports on whatever they find interesting. Mm -hmm. And we do very few experiments, but occasionally we get into something that you'll see when we talk about our little birds over there. Uh huh. Okay, how about your math class? Is that okay. different? The math classes, we try to allow the student to move at his own pace in the math class. Mm -hmm. And I'm there to help them whenever they get stuck on something. Mm -hmm. Some students are working in algebra, other students are working in a basic arithmetic, mm -hmm. and they just um, each day they pick up their materials and I'm busy throughout the class. How are the kids responding to this? Do they like working on their own or would they rather work I, in a classroom I think situation? they respond very well. Mm -hmm. The students in mathematics are uh, busy. Sometimes they do, they want to take the work out of the class even when we don't say that they have to. Uh -huh. And the students in biology find that the biology is um, 
um, more, more to their needs rather than the usual textbook biology. How are you responding to this classroom situation? Do you like it better than a normal classroom? or? I like it very much, mm -hmm. and I enjoy the students. I think they're a very nice group of students, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't, wouldn't go back to what I had before, okay. even though I like that also. What's your overall view of the, of the alternative school? I think this meets the needs of a group of students that should have been done much earlier, okay. and I'm glad that um, they feel the same way. Okay. This is Jill Stanley reporting on the alternative school. Now we're going to talk to the students and get their views about the alternative school. How do you guys feel about the school? Do you like it? Do you like coming to school? What are your views? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, we come to school to, you know, to learn our education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we this is here. better because it's, yeah. we have smaller classes yeah. and we don't have to put up with them. A lot, a lot of different people. <laughs> well, you see, at this school, we get more attention when you are working. You know, yeah. better. Well, the teachers are more interventional. We come to they school more, more often, too. <laughs> the teachers are a lot better here, I think, than the board. We get along yeah. with them better. They're more mellow. Yeah, what are some of the disadvantages? Do you have any disadvantages in school? Rather than to bully? Well, coming to school is a disadvantage. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate honesty. <laughs> uh, well, the attendance record um, at the here is a lot better than at Mainline Board. How do you count for that? How do you, how can you guys come to school? Because the teachers understand it. They understand that. Yeah, and they get it. They they that, don't. I don't know. They don't teach the class as. Uh, now everybody has to do this, this, and you know. Yeah. They just—it's better. <laughs> they, everybody can so kick back and relax like and be calm about and it. And it's a play. It's a school that like makes you want to come to school. So you feel that individualized help is better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. We we I've learned a little bit since I got here, and I don't yeah. usually learn anything. <laughs> do you get to take the same classes as you do in regular school? Yeah. Yeah. They're different though. They're mellow. Yeah. <laughs> what do they do when you're absent or if you're, you ditch or if you have an excuse to be absent? And then what does your mom do? Nothing. They give your parents a call. Or like you can come in, say like if you miss a class, come in like six period, just make it up, you know. Just yeah, and we, you know. That's how can we approach it. Maybe it's because we can make that. But it's better that way. Okay, well, anything else you guys want to say? Like, end it up? No. <laughs> well, this is Joe Stanley, and I hope you've learned something more about the alternative school at Bullard High. You're viewing the new dimension in campus television, KBUL-TV, Channel 13, Bullard High School. Like a dog.
Associated student body identifying a teacher or staff member who has lent outstanding service to Bullard students. December's choices were for teacher Calvin Lipston, who teaches physics and TV production, and Mrs. Alice Harrelson, our financial secretary. Why do you think you were chosen? I think because I have lots of money around and they like my money. <laughs> Seriously. Have you any guesses why you were picked? No. Not really. I just try to do my job and help the students the best I can. Well, Larry Matthews, vice principal, said to me that the well, yeah. student body, associated student body, contacted him, asked him what he thought, and he said he couldn't think of anybody who needed the help worse than I do. <laughs> so. For skis, Peronis has it. Feels great. You've got my size. Mine too. Hey, you guys, don't forget when you think snow, think, think Peronis. Jack Peronis Ski and Sports in Fig Garden Village. Yes, yes, this is Rebecca Bachner for KBUL, and we are here with the outstanding coach of our soccer team, Mr. Megadichian. Mr. Megadichian, after our outstanding win over Hoover, is your outlook for the future very good? We are extremely optimistic and we're looking forward for another smashing victory over the whole valley. And the reason for this good feeling is that I have a group of well-disciplined, good soccer, skillful players. And uh, we still have to beat two tough teams, Roosevelt and McLean. So, even though we are optimistic, it's Although Bowler didn't win both these games, they remain an outstanding team. We, will, we have a new motto now. We wait, we beat the enemy, and then we brag about it. Are we going to be playing Hoover again? We will have to play Hoover again in the future. Uh, we play McLean and Roosevelt only once, though. And do you think we'll beat Hoover again? Uh, I think so. Thank you. This is Rebecca Bachner reporting for KBUL. We sit Coach Meg Erdichian and Coach Jury on each other to talk over the question, can soccer take over for football? They were very civilized throughout the conversation, so listen very carefully and you, you can understand what they really feel. 
A whole lot of Bowler juniors and seniors filled out our KBUL questionnaire about their driving experiences. Our figures didn't match at all with those of the published figures, so we hit Judge Jenkins on it in his hearing room. You tell us if he really answered those questions. You also have a few good moments with our madrigals and with our symphonic band. Remember, no school's television station tries to do anything like Odd Thursday. So tell us what you want to see. We can't do everything you say, but we'll try to do anything we can do. from KBUL TV and with me today I'll be interviewing Nancy Osborne from Channel 30. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Fine. Gosh, you know, being in the broadcasting business is really exciting to me. But what prompted you into getting into something like this? Well, I was got a call one day. I had done some work on uh, commercials and I was at, out at Fresno State working on a master's degree in communicative arts. And the business manager from Channel 30 called and said, uh, you know, we've seen your commercials, and we think that what you need to do is to get into the news business. Oh, no. So um, I said, well, I don't know if I really want to do that or not, you know. Oh. So uh, they said, well, why don't you come to work and see if you like it for a while. So mm -hmm. I went to work on the street as a reporter and just loved it and said, oh, okay, mm -hmm. hey, I want to do this. So they, they said, okay, come to work. So there I am. Uh -huh. You say you did commercials. Mm -hmm. What commercials did you do? Well, locally I worked on with uh, Sun Stereo for a couple of years and worked at Public oh, Health yeah. Department commercials and radio. And um, that part of the business I worked in strictly to make money uh -huh. because it's a drag. Right. You didn't it really think it is. would open up to anything like this? Well, no, I didn't think that it would be something I'd want to do for the rest of my life, going and selling coffee or, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, selling a product is really not something that I, that I was interested right. in. And I kind of felt that way at first about the broadcasting business, that it would be the same kind of thing, that you know, it would just be selling yourself I in see. the same sense. But it changes every day you go to work, and there's always something, something, something happening every day. And it's never the same It twice. makes it more interesting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. what, what aspect do you like the best about broadcasting? You know? I think the fact that you go to work and it's never the same. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nine-to-five job in the sense that you're there for eight hours. But it's mm. not nine to five in the sense that each and every hour is totally different than the hour that you spent before, I and every see. day it's the same. You know, I mean, every oh. day it's just a different. Uh, right. <laughs> a lot of people. If you like meeting people, it's a terrific business for that. Oh Because yes. uh, well, it's like here I am sitting here today. I mean, mm -hmm. if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, why would anybody want to talk to me? That's true. You know, and well, I mean, that that's the truth. Right. You meet a lot of people. You meet uh, people in government. You meet people in. Uh, um, the business and uh, everywhere you go. Now, not everybody's going to like doing something like that, you know, meeting people, but those that have that kind of an interest, you say, would do well at a type sure. of job like this. Sure. Or just as a reporter. Um, I think being a reporter, to me, um, I wish I could do more of it. I get mm -hmm. stuck in the studio a lot more than I would than I would prefer. I prefer uh -huh. to be out on the street eight hours a day. Right. Because that's really interesting. That's what the news business is all about. Uh -huh. Getting out on the street and um, meeting people, covering stories, uh, yes. learning how your photographer works. All of that part of the business to me is the most exciting part about it. Um, getting in front of the camera is the end product. Right. But all the things <laughs> that happen prior to a newscast, um, that's what the business is about. It's about working together 25 people in a newsroom that's and sweet. at 630 you've got a half hour show. <laughs> Hopefully you know, the people that are watching that half-hour show will get something out of it. Right now, uh, statistics show that most people 
um, rely on a television newscast for 75% of what is going on in the world. Uh -huh. That's where they get yeah. their knowledge. And uh, it becomes so important that people who are in the news business uh, realize that what they put on the air is uh, probably all that people are going to get. I mean, people have even stopped reading newspapers. Oh, you know, people read definitely. newspapers, but the, the number of newspapers in this country is declining. Because well, they can people watch, watch TV. TV. Why, why read yeah. a newspaper? You can find it so, out on television. But one thing, yeah. like, um, when you're on TV and people that are in films and stuff like that, they get known, you know, the mm -hmm. public. Oh, I know her. And, like, if you go into, like, um, restaurants and there's not a table, but they say, that's Nancy Osborne, all of a sudden you find that it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. Some people make it out that being known is really bad because you get bombarded by people and stuff. But don't well, you have... it's, it's a little of one and a little of, of the other. Right. Um, it's nice to be able to walk into to a place and have someone go, oh, I watch you and I like your newscast. Right. You know, and um, we're really glad that you're doing it. It makes you feel good. It, it makes you feel good that people, know, that people are, that they like you. Yeah. Um, because if, you, you know, if you're the kind of person who wants to be around be people, known. it's <laughs> nice, you know, that they like you. But then on the other hand, you can go in a restaurant, like I was in a restaurant the other night uh, with my daughter, mm -hmm. and we were sitting at the table, and uh, um, there was uh, two couples at a table next to us. Okay. And it was obvious that they didn't like me, you know, they didn't oh, like what I did. No. So they would sit there, and they would talk just loud enough so I could hear them. Are you but, kidding? But, but, that's, but that was okay, see, because that's, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. Right. But at the same time, probably the worst part about being known is that you can't, you, you don't feel like you can look bad. You know, you don't feel like, I, I can't just, you know, at 9 o'clock uh, on Saturday morning just right. fly down to the grocery store and, you know, have to you know, put on all your makeup your hair and fix your and, you know, hair. Well, I mean, I feel like I have to do that, but I don't want people you to You don't go, want people to you know, see you in looking what you consider uh, bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, maybe, maybe looking more like myself. Right. People, people have a tendency to say, okay, this is how this person looks, because I see them every evening at 6.30 and they night. look like that. And, uh, if they see you different, they're going to say, they what? Go, wow, what happened to her? <laughs> yeah, something's going on. But um, for women, is the opera, are there a lot of opportunities for women? Right now, I would say it's probably the best, the best really? it's ever been, only because it's just very popular. You know, it's, uh, that's, uh -huh. what you, that's what you do. I mean, uh, women's li movement is, you know, hot and heavy, and it's a very um, in thing to have a woman on your station somewhere. Well, we're running out of time, but do you have any suggestions for those people that would like to know what anything they could do to open up um, getting into the broadcasting, like in school, certain classes to take to build them up? I would say take everything. Uh, I think I think journalism, um, RTV, anything like that, but at the same time don't forget that everything, everything that you can possibly learn can be a benefit because when right. you're dealing in this business it's people and everything about people is important everything every aspect of you know whether they're garage mechanics or nuclear physicists everybody has to be able to you know a person who's in the news business needs to be able to know a little bit about everything right and I think that's you know because you may know only like two things mm -hmm. but one of those two things might get you into a conversation with somebody, with somebody that, that you need to be you know, that you need to find something right. out from. So you, I think, I think getting locked into saying, well, I have to take, you know, 72 Just RTV classes, you, or I would say take everything. Right. Well, thank you very much. It's been You're very welcome. interesting. This is Pam's Bork for KBUL-TV.